Hi family, uh, Shabbat Shalom to all of you that are watching this. We've been doing a Shabbat teaching on the, uh, Luke 15, Why Do You Call Me Prodigal? And I want to focus today still on the son that we choose to call prodigal. And I want to focus on this part because it really speaks to my heart. You know, uh, the son comes to himself and says, I'm going to go to my father because in my father's house, the servants have got more food that they need. So I will tell him, I have sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And just uh, put me into work as just a servant. Now, somehow he believes, the son believes that his sin against the father and the sins that he has committed since has disqualified him as a son. And he no longer need, can be as a, a true son to the father. And the father running to him is uh, saying to him, hey, let's cover him with a rope and put sandals on his feet and a ring on his hand. Is speaking on a completely different perspective. So today, if you're interested in knowing what that perspective is, stay with us. So uh, at the same time, I want to say, take this time and say thank you, everyone. Every day, you know, there's more of you being added to this family in YouTube and Instagram and everything else. We are grateful for every one of you that is joining us, that is pressing the subscribe button or becoming a member in this uh, family group. Thank you for all of your support. We are really, really excited that our family is growing and the word of God is being preached and taught with a, uh, a way that is bringing the spirit of disciples out of the heart of people. So back to the word of God. You know, uh, many years ago, I was in North Vancouver and I was part of a church and I had a dream. In the dream, uh, I had been very, very uh, dirty and I was looking over a fence into a backyard that was well uh, manicured and there was toys all over in there. There was a sandbox and a little uh, train rail like a roller coaster but a smaller version and there were two kids staying and playing in there and I was on the outside. Then they came uh, and looked over uh, the fence, this old man with a white beard, and he opened the door. He says, how are you doing, son? And I just didn't think I'm clean enough or something. I said, oh, sorry. And he says, no, no, no. Would you like to come in? And he grabbed me and brought me inside that, that backyard. And he told me, Go, go ahead, play in my dream. And I was playing and I was so shocked. And there were those other two kids that were playing one in the sandbox and one in the rails and going around in the train. And so as he, we were playing and I was just beginning to enjoy the play, that old man came and said to the, uh, the kid in the, in the sandbox, I'm leaving for now, but I'll come back soon. Take care of the house. And the man left and just seconds or uh, moments later, I looked into that place that I had stood outside the fence and I saw a bunch of kids and I saw them they are looking over. And I said to the boy in the sand, hey, you need to open the door because uh, the old man put you in charge, but he looked at the guy in the train and said nothing, kept playing. I said, hey, you need to do this. You need to open the door so that they come in and play with us. They can play also. And then he looked at the other guy and the other guy said, no, 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 no. You should not let them in. They are dirty and they don't know the rules. Let the old man come himself and let him let them in himself. And I looked at the, the boy in the sand and I said, but that old man left you in charge. 
If you don't say anything against the other one and open the door, I cannot play with you guys. And when the old man comes, he will be very angry with you. I woke up from that dream. And when I woke up, I was so disturbed because the man that was in the sandbox was my senior pastor. And the man that was in the rail, uh, the train was the senior elder in the board meetings and eldership of the church. And so I was like so shocked. I made an appointment with my pastor and I told him the dream in the same exact way. And he said, uh, Afshin, who were they? Do you know them? I said, yes, the boy in the sandbox was you, pastor, and the boy in the train was the elder, so and so. And he looked at me, he says, Afshin, same as in the dream, I don't want to disturb the eldership and the people in that, in our board. We cannot let everybody in because we have something that we, we, we want to keep because these people are used to certain environment. And if we let everybody in, it's just going to be disturbing to those people who they call this place home. And I said to him, what will you say when the old man, the father comes home and says, I left you in charge. I want to share with you this. Because in this uh, story, it is so interesting that the son, who is dirty and filthy, feels that he is no longer able to be called a son or have the authority to take his old position as a son. In fact, when you look at both sons, they both uh, speak of being a servant. The older son I says, I have obeyed you and served you always. So he has got this servant mentality. And the younger boy, having gone, shows that he never wanted to do uh, what the father wanted him to do because he never understood the heart of the father. He thought the father is a master. The only position they had gotten to know their father was the position of a landlord and a boss that has servants. They never had gotten to know the father. That is why the father says, your, your, your brother was dead. My son was lost. My son was dead. Because he knew that these guys, the spirit of sonhood, Listen to this story. The father said, my son was dead. So he was, he was breathing. So what are you saying? In a, in a, in a culture in the Middle East, when a father says, my son is dead, is so that the son has no idea who the father is, has no relationship uh, between a father and a son. So he says that even though he is alive, that relationship, the sonship is dead. And the father longed to see that sonship awakened. When the son returns home, the father is excited because for the first time, he sees an opportunity to proclaim to everybody that that relationship could never, ever be destroyed it needed to bloom. It needed to be realized. It needed to be walked into. And that is what the father always wanted for both of the sons. And he says to the son, he, he says to the servants, bring the rope. But the rope that you put, he is still dirty. He has not been cleaned. He has not taken a bath. He still smells like the pigs. And according to the Jewish culture, because he has been with the pigs, unless he has been cleaned, he cannot enter the house. Isn't that what we do with people that want to return to the house of the, the Lord? We say to them, through repentance, you need to be washed first. You need to be cleansed. You need to prove to us through servanthood and suffering that you are worthy to be called a son again. 
but that is not the Father. And we don't understand that because we have the mentality of the older brother. Let him prove himself. We take verses of the Bible, like the verses of, of John the Baptist, when he says, he show fruits of repentance as a, a verse to build theology on and give it to the sons. And that's not what John the Baptist did. John the Baptist gave that verse to the Pharisees, not to the people that came. And we take those words and give it to each other as if the other one was a Pharisee. In fact, if we want to use that verse, then we should give it to the people that have never left the house and have kept the law and have kept the rules. So taking and using that verse is completely out of context. Bringing fruits of repentance was already evident to the father because the son had returned home. The son out of all the world had chosen to come to the father and to the father's house. And that was evidence enough for the father. And I want to, I want to challenge you guys. I want to challenge you to recognize that both sons had a false understanding of their father and both sons were suffering from the sickness of servanthood. Now, serving the Lord is not a bad thing. Paul calls himself a servant of the gospel. That's not a bad thing if you know who you are, if you know your identity as a son. But if you don't know yourself and you are trying to prove your sonship to God by your servanthood, you're completely mistaken. You're completely out of uh, that, that path that God wants for you because God's desire is first and foremost to prove to you that I know your sins. I know what you have done. I know your actions have shamed you and shamed me. I know you are naked. Don't try with your own actions to take a fig leaf and cover your, your nakedness. Allow me, son, to cover you with a rope that I have provided for you. Allow me to, to cover the shame that you have. It will still take time. But today, the father wanted to celebrate the son. The father wanted to remind the son and everybody else in the neighborhood, what the father's heart was for that son. Imagine this. The son is still dirty. He is just coming with the pigs and the father puts a robe on him. And imagine the father kills the fattened calf and starts dancing and putting music on for the son that is still under that rope and with that sandal and even a beautiful ring, he is still unclean. And the father says, I'm going to celebrate you today. It's going to still take time before I attend to you and help you wash the stink of the pigs and the filth of the whey and all the things off of you. But today, my rope covers you. Today, as you are, my rope covers you. And why would you do that, Father? Because the Father's love is that covers all multitude of sin. His rope of love covers us. You know, in the culture of the Middle East, uh, when the boy asks, uh, I want my inheritance, he shames the father. But when the father speaks those words, I want to cover, bring the rope and put it on him, bring the sandals and put it on his feet and give, put a ring on his finger. The actions of the father completely null and voids the shame that was committed or the shame that was brought up by the son. 
it completely washes it away as if it never existed because the love of the father spoke so much louder that not only covered the son, but restored him to the full position that he had been born into. Paul says, I press on to grab hold of that which God grabbed hold of me for. I want to ask you, and I want to challenge every one of you, brothers and sisters, whether you are younger brother or whether you are the older brother, we need to attend to this false mentality of servanthood. We need to realize we serve, but we are not servants. We serve our father because we love our father. We love him and we want to be with him. But our identity is sons to him who redeemed us, who made us part of his own family by offering his son for you and I. He has covered all of us and he is there waiting for you. The process is going to take a while before we are cleansed and washed. Trust the process. Don't make up religious laws that we uh, that are outside the, the Bible. Do not use the, the verses of the Bible out of context. If you are an, a, a, a man of God or a woman of God and you want to protect the house of the Lord, do so. The, the protection that comes through loving, not through using the verses out of context. Be with your brother and sister. Celebrate them. Let's get rid of the spirit that gives us a false identity that is limited only to being a servant. We are sons, and as sons and daughters, we serve our Father. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Please share it with your friends. Till next Shabbat.